This is our design duo. We have our Western Red Cedar Pergola that Teresa and I built years ago. And long story short, everything that's made out of cedar is pretty much like the day we put it in. Everything that isn't made out of cedar is showing the test of time. Most notably, our earthen base, our landscaped base. We had high hopes for this, but long story short, we changed the furniture, not enough light is getting to the grass, and it basically turned to mud. What we're gonna do instead, and I do all my pergolas this way now, I love it, deck it. So it's a warm, inviting, very natural feel for a pergola situation. Showing mud spots too. Now I'm gonna get a close up of that, what's growing underneath there too, that's good. Absolutely. Yeah, that's good. I'm working on the railroad. So the movie where Mark digs a hole happened before all this. I got all this level and graded, and to add a little belt and suspenders, I swiped a little technique from perimeter drains inside the house, and I made what I call an ag bag, a bag of aggregate, essentially a sock of geotextile fabric, landscape fabric, that I wrapped up filled with stones and wrapped up, and I put underneath my framing. All the other framing in here is gonna span above the dirt, so it'll be out of the ground. Next, I've done corner blocks. Essentially, what these do is they'll act as nailers for when we put the decking on later. Finally, and I'm excited to get this carpentry going, I've leveled around the entire surface for the band joist, which is what this is. And it's gonna lay my decking out exactly where I want it, tie in with the yard, and take this earthen mound that didn't work and make it a cedar deck that will and that will love. Should I or shouldn't I treat the tops of the joists? Some carpenters put flashing or a peel and stick membrane. It's expensive, um, it takes a while, and other carpenters are like, ah, I don't need to do that. Um, I land somewhere in the middle. This is a belt and suspenders approach. I've got a stain and sealer right here. I'll put it along the top. Two things to touch on here. First one is my first piece is a rip cut to get me around and transition the posts. So whenever we rip a piece on the table saw, what I like to do is use the router and a roundover bit to knock the edge off to match the factory roundover. Secondly, this is another reason why I really love to set up a work table instead of just sawhorses, for example. You always need a platform to put everything from routered wood to coffee cups and keys. What I'm doing here is using this to transition here, and I have kept myself, and you can do this any number of different ways, but I kept a half inch reveal here and a half inch reveal here so that when I cut all these deck boards later, any imperfections, anything that moved around, I've got a little wiggle room. Here's an old school trick from the world of carpentry and hand nailing in the days before nail guns. If you're using a bulk screw to fasten your deck surface down like I am, and this is a number 10 by three inch all weather screw, excellent screw, um, it's worth spending a minute or two or three or whatever it is every so often to turn all the heads the same way. This way, you can feed them to yourself and they all come up the same direction. Always blue chalk, by the way. Red chalk doesn't come off, or black chalk. Blue chalk come off with water. So I always use blue chalk. I square across my first board to make sure I'm straight. And then, string lines are straight, baby. 
Oh, I like that. And we'll cut them all off at once. And that is much, much faster and way more accurate and more flexible for imperfections in the way the world works um, than cutting each piece to length individually. Sometimes, if I'm close to the band joist underneath, I'll set the depth of the circular saw, um, you know, just over an inch and a half. But I know I've got a half inch overhang here. So One of my favorite things about doing a wood deck base like we made here with our Western Red Cedar on a pergola is that this project becomes just that much more carpentry and a little less landscaping. I had to do kind of a trick. So instead of trying to make miters close up, which turned out to be kind of hard, what I did instead was I call these medallions that hides that old blemish and makes this a new cool space. So we've got our decking down, we've got our trim elements in, and I'm gonna add color to this, but whenever we're talking about decks and decking, the story of maintenance always comes up. And you have to maintain everything, really. You wash your car, you paint your house. I'm gonna put stain and sealer on this deck surface. But Western Red Cedar is literally <laughs> the world's first maintenance-free product. Left alone, this will weather to a beautiful natural gray, and I don't have to do a thing to it. Well, except enjoy it.